Well, I knew he had a great ground game, but I knew he was a really good kickboxer. And I have a lot – I've trained a lot of guys that have great ground games, and I control them very well. Um, but he has a very good guard. It's hard to keep pressure on him. And uh, in that first round, I made a mistake and postured, and he kicked me right in the stomach, kicked me off of him, got back up. Had to take about 20 because he kicked me pretty hard and then uh, get back after it. After that, I just knew giving him space is going to be a problem. I, I don't like to be a guy that gets him out and lays on somebody. I'm kind of disappointed that I did that. But he's, he's a good grappler, and keeping him there was tough, and there was no guarantee to win on the feet. I knew there's guaranteed win on the ground. Um, and, you know, late in that third round, I just kept telling myself, you're not a guy that lays and finishes a decision. You're a finisher. And so I just kept inching and inching and inching to that arm triangle. And uh, I'd been disappointed with myself if I didn't finish him, and I, just, I had to get that finish. I hope so. Um, like I said, I, I'm not thrilled with my performance for the first and second round, but I did what I had to do. But at the end of the day, I finished a very good uh, fighter, and I think that should put me right there. We've got limitations on who can get in the country, so I think it only makes sense that uh, me and uh, Lima fight for that vacant title. And I talked to Scott Coker yesterday, and he kind of mentioned that they were hoping to keep the Musasi-Lima uh, fight intact. Um, would you be willing to wait for the winner of that, or would you want to stay active and take another fight like this? Uh, you know, it's whatever Bellator wants me to do right now. Um, I, I feel good. Uh, I'm not hurt. I got a little cut I got to get over. That's not going to take long. I'll be back in the gym hitting pads and stuff this week. So I, I'm ready for whatever. Obviously, the title is the main thing uh, on my horizon. That's what I want. Uh, that's what my eye's on. But uh, whatever, you know, whatever's next is next. So you said you were disappointed with yourself in the uh, first and second round. I mean, what, what would you have done differently? Uh, you know, I mean, I, I'm fighting a tough guy. I, I say disappointed myself. I wished I would have done better. But he's a very good fighter. Uh, you don't get 15 pro wins without being a good guy that knows how to survive. And he's got a good ground game. I mean, I grappled some of the best guys in the world. He's got a good guard. Uh, I, I fought to stay out of it the whole fight. Um, and you just, you know, I can't uh, take anything away from him because he's the reason that I had to just hold, lay on him for a little bit and hold him. But uh, I, I hate that I had to do it that way, but I had to get that win. And, you know, that's what it is. Your own toughest critic. Uh, you know, Another submission win, you know, a long list of submission wins for you. You know, speak on your career at this point. Um, you know, I'm just a guy uh, that grew up in Gardendale, Alabama, uh, that wasn't the most athletic guy in the world. And I learned at an early age, I just got to outwork everybody. And that's what I've tried to do my entire career. You know, I, I can't control how strong somebody is. I can't control how explosive you are. But I control, can control if I put more hours in the gym and uh, put more work in. So, uh, I think that's my career showed that, and I think I hope I'm um, a different fighter than I was two years ago just from that. And like you said, you, you, you would be willing to not fight for the title next if that's what Bellator wants. You know, are you looking to get back in the qu cage quickly? Um, do you want to take some time off? Uh, I'd definitely like to fight again before the end of the year. You know, um, I know there's uh, – I try to be um, – I guess have a diplomatic approach to things. There's a lot of guys out there that are hungry because of COVID and need fights. So obviously I'd love to go get another fight in, but I know guys need it. So I'm not going to be that guy that's just wearing people out, hounding them about it because uh, I know other people need it. But uh, I'd be happy to get one uh, sooner rather than later. And Scott Coker was sitting cage side. I mean, do you feel that you did enough for that title shot for that big uh, First of all, Scott, uh, thank you so much for putting these fights on. I know it's a hard time. A lot of sports haven't started back. It means a lot to me and my family that you went through what it takes to put this fight on and run such a great show. So thank you for that. Um, and then on top of that, uh, I think there's no reason Lima and I don't fight for that title before the end of the year. I know Lima's hungry and wants to fight. I want to fight, and we'll put it on a good show. Our next question will come from the line of Kevin Verghese. Kevin, your line is now live. Hey, John, congrats on a dominating victory. Uh, one of the key questions, you know, with the uh, arena being quiet, you know, uh, you know, recently people have been able to hear the commentators. Were you able, were you able to hear John McCarthy in, late in the round saying like, hey, you need to finish, you know, you should finish him off? I didn't hear that. I heard a couple of things they were saying. I could hear him saying Salter took round one, right? And 
I was hoping they were agreeing to that because I thought I did. Um, but no, just, you know, like I was saying, I'm a finisher. When people turn on the TV to watch me fight, they expect me to finish. And I just, I wasn't being that guy. I was going out there for the win. And then it just clicked. I got to get this finish. I can't just sit here and win. That's not me. All right. Well, last question from me is, you know, when you got to mount, were you looking to just, hey, find the position perfectly or were you trying to execute the finish right away? Well, I knew with me being cut, I knew he was going to see that blood and he was going to go nuts. So number one, he, he cut me in the second round. So I knew I can't ever give him another space because it's going to get slippery from the blood. So he's hard got to hold on to anyway. Uh, so that, that really led a lot to me just holding on there for a little bit because I knew with the cut I had to be smart and not let that get all over him and him get slippier, uh, slippery. And, um, you know, that, that was really the most important thing uh, in that second round. And in the third round, I knew if I get there, he's not getting up. I can hold him there. doesn't matter how tired I am. And that's a position I work a lot, um, especially for this fight, knowing he was a good grappler. Uh, but like I said, as I sat there a little while, I just kept telling myself, you don't do this. You finish people, so get the finish. Our next question is coming from Andrew Benjamin. Andrew? Hey, John, congrats on the big win. Um, I just got to ask you about the finish that happened. So we saw you do the arm triangle choke from Mount, and that's, a, that's very rarely ever done, and if it is, it's very unsuccessful a lot of times. But can you just talk about what, what, that, how you knew you had that in? Because most people would tend to go to the side with a submission move like that to get the uh, arm triangle choke. Yeah, I, I do my arm triangle for mount. I don't step out from the side. It's just something I've been working for a long time. I actually got that from a training partner about five years ago, and I just love it. It's a different way to finish it. Um, you've got to you know, treat it differently uh, and use your elbows differently, but it's a lot safer. I think with no shirts, stepping out the side control can just be too dangerous. A lot of people lose fights for it. And I know if I have enough time, I'll finish that. So there's no reason for me to step out the side. No, when you say it's uh, safer, do you mean that stepping to the side – would have given him an opportunity to just uh, get out of that uh, submission attempt? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. They were talking in the arena. I think you're saying something about stepping out to the side. And I like to finish stepping out to the side uh, in the room or when I got a rash guard on with no shirts. I'm not taking that chance. John Poli. Hi, John. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. So uh, I want to start right at the beginning of the fight. You went right out there within the first minute. You took him right down and put him on his back. Was that your game plan to go right out there and get that takedown right from the get-go? Um, I wanted to tag him early, but uh, you know, he's leaning forward hard, uh, which realistically kind of left him open. But uh, it led me to believe he's trying to bait me with something. And uh, I want to tag him a couple times. But when a guy comes out there and kind of puts his head right in front of you, you know, he's a veteran. Uh, he's been fighting a long time. I'm not going to bite on something that I probably shouldn't. So I just figure put him on his back early, let him know that's there, and then see how that takes the fight. And then right towards the end of the first round, you went for, I believe it was a triangle choke. I was wondering just how close that was, and did you think that you had him in a good spot there? Not, not at all. He, uh, he, he just stood right out. I lost the head right away. I was hoping he would relax for a second and I could slip him back into it. Um, but he, he did the smart thing. He came right out of it. And it was more just trying to hold on to him to look for a sweep when he popped out. And that's what I had to do. Last question here, Randall Folks. Great finish, John. You've now had nine fights in Bellator, eight wins, only losing to Hoffa Lovato. You now have three wins in a row. If you don't get that title shot next, who would you like? Is there a name you have in mind? Um, you know, there's a lot of guys on the roster. Uh, there's a lot of good guys. I really don't have anybody picked out. There's nobody, honestly, I know it's funny to say for me as a fighter, there's nobody I don't like that I want to go beat up. Um, and uh, I think there's a lot of good guys out there. I want to fight for the title, number one. But there's nobody in particular that really comes down to what Bellator wants me to do. Now, hypothetically speaking, let's say that they do rebook Lima and Musasi. If one of those two happened to fall out, would you be, able to, would you be willing to step in late notice? Yeah, that's not even a question. I'll be ready. That fight happens. I'll be in camp. I'll be ready to go. All right. Thank you, John. Congratulations. Thank you, guys.